Hello and welcome once again to Time Between Times Storytelling with me, Owen Staten. Welcome to the place where tales are told in a traditional way. Welcome to the place where you can let all your cares and your worries wash away for just a few moments as we tell a tale. Let your imagination run wild as we go back through the history and the myths and the legends of Wales and hear these old stories told once again for you at the time between times. And today is a special day for me, for it's a day when I go home. Today's tale is all about the village of Cumavan in the Avon Valley, the village where I was born and I hold close to my heart. But it's a tragic tale, a dark tale, but one I hope you will enjoy. So please, sit back, close your eyes if you can, and listen to the tale of the ghost of Pull Gwenllian. But before we start, let us imagine that all our modern trappings have disappeared. Let's imagine that we are sat at the time between times, the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin, so thin that for just a few moments the fairies can step into our realm and for a few moments we can step into theirs. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time of fairies. Imagine you have walked the winding path through the forest. Everywhere you look, the trees stretch to the sky. But we sit there in the clearing. We look around at all our friends. We can see the fire crackling and we listen to stories told. Everywhere we look, there are friendly faces. Everywhere we look, people are happy. So here we are. And now we go back almost a thousand years to the Avon Valley, a place of peace and tranquility and a stark beauty. There on a hilltop, overlooking what is now the village of Carmarthen, stood the castle Pencastell, an old wooden fort atop a hilltop. It was known as a place of peace. It was known as a place where welcomes were given. It was known as a place where all could feast with Lord Howell and his beautiful daughter, Gwenllian. There in the wooden castle there was a great wooden hall with a fire pit in the middle. And there on nights when it was so dark you could not see your hand in front of your face, travellers were made welcome. And it was on a night, just like that, almost a thousand years ago, that our tale happened. It was a night where a storm raged outside. The lightning rent the sky and thunder rocketed through the rooftops. It was there that the fire crackled and the rain hammered down on the thatched roof. It was there that all the travellers and all the people of the nearby villages had gathered to hear tales told traditionally, to hear songs being sung, to hear poems being performed, and Howell and Gwenllian offered them the food and the drink that they all craved and wanted and the security and safety that they needed. But times were changing, and the Norman lords had come to Gower. And this night, at the time between times, in this storm, the watchman called from the gate, Norman soldiers approaching! It was there he came with his retinue. There he came, Fitzwilliam, Pascal Fitzwilliam, and his knights rode into Pencastell seeking shelter. And although they were given the cold shoulder by the people of the village, Howell and Gwenllian welcomed them into the hall, gave them food and gave them drink, gave them everything they could possibly want. But as the night grew longer, they grew louder, until in the end all of Howell's people had been pushed away, returning to their houses, and just the Norman knights and a few of Howell's retinue were there. Pascal grew louder, he drank more and more, 
and more his eye turned to the beautiful Gwenllian. Her auburn hair hung down her back. Her dress was made of the most beautiful materials from far away. She is the most beautiful girl I have ever seen, said Pascal. I will marry you. He climbed over a table, walked near the fire pit, and knelt down like a fool, falling once, then getting up and saying, I will marry you, I will marry you now. Howell tried to stand in front of him, trying to beg him not to make a scene. Pascal's knights, all in their cups, jumped up, and before long swords were drawn. It was on this night that a tragedy occurred. A battle in the great hall at Pencastel. What remained of Howell's men and the knights of Fitzwilliam battled swords against shields, armour rattling, clanging in the night, although the storm still raged outside. Pascal jumped to get at Gwenllian, but her father stepped in front of him. Old though he was, he was still a great warrior. He drew his sword, which was on the wall behind him, and battled Pascal there in the great hall, over the tables, round the chairs, Swords clashed, until at last Pascal, fresh from the wars and a much younger man, thrust his sword into Howell's chest, who fell to the ground, dead. As this happened, the battle continued behind, and Gwen Hien looked on in horror as her father had died, but also the fire pit had tipped over, and suddenly, and almost without warning, the hall was ablaze. She rushed away, throwing things at Pascal as he, as he came forward, trying to grab her. She put herself between a table between herself and Pascal and tipped it over, and then leapt out of a window into the courtyard. The rain fell as she rushed through the night. She could hear the Norman Lord calling behind, Get out! Get out! The place is ablaze! And before she knew it, before she had run out of the gatehouse, she looked round and the night was lit up by the burning Pencastel. She rushed down the mountainside, through the bush, over the fields, climbing over fences, through the forest, and looked behind her, and she could hear a horse rushing. And there, in the darkness, with the shadow of the moon and the flames, she saw Pencastel burn, and she saw Fitzwilliam chasing her. She rushed down the valley, steep though it is, over rocks, until she came to the steep flowing river. Of the river Avon. She stopped there. There was nowhere left to go. The river was so high it was bursting its banks and swirling around dangerously. She turned around to rush back to the village. But then through the bush and the forest burst Pascal Fitzwilliam. He reached down, grabbed hold of Gwen Llian, and tried to turn around to put her on the back of his horse. But she would not stand for it. She grabbed the bridle and pulled it the other way, and the beast reared up. Tragically, both Gwenllian and Pascal Fitzwilliam fell into the River Avon. Pascal was still wearing his chainmail armour and drowned almost instantly. His hand was seen going under the water as the river carried away this villain to his doom. Gwen Lian fought and fought against the river, fought against the weather, fought against the swirling water. But sadly it was too much, and it was there that she drowned. There, in the river Avon, that she breathed her last. Her broken body was found a few miles down, brought up and buried with honour by the local people. It is said that when the river is high, when the river swirls and washes down towards the beach, there near the village of Camavan is a place called Pull Gwenllian, Gwenllian's pool, where the water gathers, a dangerous swirling place. This is where she lost her life. But when the river is high and the rain washes down as it did on that night long ago, a strange mist is often seen hovering over the pool. Strange mist 
in the form of a beautiful woman. Gwen Llian's ghost still guards the pool to this day, and many passerby or traveller has been saved as she stands guard over the pool. And her father, Howell, a kind man, his burned and charred body was carried out of Pencastell all those years ago, taken not far away and buried with his treasure under a huge stone that took 50 men to carry. That great stone still lies there to this day. If you go near it, you can see that many holes have been drilled where people have tried to get access to the treasure over the years. None have succeeded. The King's Stone, there it is, the Great Stone. But again, on nights, but this time clear nights where the moon is full and the wind washes around, the spirit of an old man is sometimes seen sitting on the stone with his crown still on his head, weeping for his daughter Gwen Llian, lost in a storm almost a thousand years ago. And that, my friends, is the tale of Pull Gwen Llian. That, my friends, is the tale told today at the time between times. Thank you so much for joining me. This weekend, I have just released a brand new ghost story on the Time Between Times podcast. It hasn't been shown on these videos. So if you want to check that out, please do. Please subscribe. Please like and leave a nice comment below so it feels like I'm not talking to myself. And join me again next week at the Time Between Times. A time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. Until then, please take care of yourself. Please look after yourself. And you'll starve. <laughs>